Bob Arum and Top Rank made major power moves by signing Inui last week, and yesterday they signed no other than Josh Taylor, possibly the best talent out of the UK. The UK has a lot of great fighters from AJ to Tyson Fury to Kell Brook, and the list goes on and on and on. However, currently, Josh Taylor, he stands out out of the bunch because he could do it all. He could bang, he could box, he could fight mid-range, he could fight in the inside, he could fight in the outside, and he just stands out and he's willing to fight every single fighter in the game. And as soon as I laid my eyes on Josh Taylor, I told y'all he's a special talent. So that's great news for Top Rank and ESPN and Bob Aaron. But on the other hand, I believe Eddie Hearn and DeZone dropped the ball with this one. I mean, how do y'all lick both of the winners of the Super 6 tournaments that y'all set up on DeZone, Josh Taylor and Inui, y'all let both of them fighters go to ESPN, Top Rank, and Bob Aaron. Meanwhile, they paid Mikey Garcia $7 million a guy coming off a loss to fight Jesse Vargas at 140 when y'all had the best talent at 140, which was Josh Taylor. So on this video, we're going to touch on the mega fight between Terrence Crawford and Josh Taylor in the future. And obviously, in Inouye future and ESPN versus The Zone because Bob Arum been here since promoting the greatest Muhammad Ali. So he obviously knows a thing or two about business and the longevity of his brand. Meanwhile, on the other hand, The Zone and Eddie Hearn, they pretty new. And if they keep making business decisions and move the way they are with these YouTube fights, and especially signing fighters like Mikey Garcia for one fight deals, paying them all this money. Meanwhile, they letting their best talent go like Josh Taylor and Inui, that have a bright future. That's not good for the longevity of the zone and matchroom. So we're going to talk about it. How y'all doing, ladies and gentlemen? Pieces and blessings upon all my achis and all my sisters out there. Welcome to Aki Ak Aki TV. If you want to be part of the family and you don't no longer want to be a casual fan, you want to become a hardcore boxing fan, then attend the Aki University for free. All you have to do is subscribe below if you're trying to get smarter by the minute, if you're trying to get dumb about a second, don't and listen to these casual fans slash old media. So as the PBC and Al Heyman been winning the race in the boxing game, delivering the best fights in 2019 as they have for the past couple years, Bob Ehrman, top rank, been keeping up. Obviously, they haven't been competing with Al Heyman. However, they are here to stay, at least longevity-wise. You see Bob Ehrman making smart business decisions like signing Tyson Fury so he could eat with Al Heyman. Such as keeping Terrence Crawford, doing whatever to keep Terrence Crawford because he knows a thing or two about business and he knows when it comes down to it, he going to be eating and splitting that pie with Al Heyman when he fights Errol Spence, regardless if it's 60-40 split or 50-50. On the other hand, the zone and Eddie Hearn, I don't think they've been making longevity decisions. They've been trying to capture whatever money they could get their hands on. However, the longevity of the zone is not looking too great. I see Eddie Hearn doing great things for Matchroom by basically signing Usyk and then now he trying to give up the WBO strap that AJ currently has to give it to Usyk. So if AJ fights Wilder and Wilder knocks him out and he becomes the undisputed heavyweight champion, Eddie Hearn be like, hold up, I have the WBO, you're not the undisputed champion yet. So that's Eddie Hearn way of going about things. But like I said, Bob Arum is moving way smarter, way more clever than Eddie Hearn and the zone, trying to keep up with the genius Al Heyman. So that being said, as far as how much of a power move is signing Josh Taylor to top rank, let me explain and educate the fans that don't know how good Josh Taylor is. Josh Taylor just won the Super 6 coming out of nowhere on some Andre Ward-ish. Now, we know currently the best 140-pounder is Josh Taylor. If you didn't join the tournament, then you didn't want no smoke with everybody. So, obviously, he is the best. However, to be undisputed, he has to go through Ramirez. That's another top-ranked fighter. 
Then, when they establish who's the undisputed 140 pounder, which most likely is gonna be Josh Taylor, obviously, Josh Taylor gonna move up in weight and fight no other than Terrence the Bud Crawford pound for pound number one, the last undisputed 140 pounder. And that's such a great fight, such a mega fight, and it sets up one of the biggest fights in boxing. So that being said, if Terrence Crawford can get the Errol Spence fight, because we don't know what kind of condition Errol Spence is in right now. We could only assume. Ain't no telling when the truth is going to fight the bug. I'm more of the believers that it's going to take place 2021. So for the meantime, who is Bud Crawford going to fight? Obviously, he could fight Patrick at 154, win a strap there, be a four-time world champion in four different weight classes, then move back down. And if he can't get Errol Spence, like I stated, try to fight the likes of Danny Garcia and all these PBC fighters, obviously Porter out of the equation because he said that's his friend. So we're not going to dive into that today. But what we are going to dive into is the Danny Garcia situation because Bob Aaron came out stating that Danny's saying we only offered him $3 million, but we offered Amir Khan the same thing. However, Amir Khan, during negotiations, said, I'm worth more. I want more. And so we delivered. If Danny Garcia even replied to the offer, we would have definitely offered him more. So that's my point. If you want to fight, you're going to negotiate. But if he can't get these PBC fighters, obviously the winner of Taylor versus Ramirez is going to set up the mega bout between Terrence Crawford and Josh Taylor because I believe Josh Taylor will come on top fighting Ramirez. Like I said, ESPN and Top Rank are making major power moves compared to The Zone and Eddie Hearn. Obviously, they're not doing as well as I Heyman. However, they are staying in the game and they definitely trying to eat with I Heyman. So that being said, subscribe below if you're trying to get smart about the minute, if you're trying to get dumb about a second, don't and listen to these casual fans. Click on the notification bell to get notified every time you post or go live on Split Decision every Sunday. Check out my man Luna Tune for the funniest boxing memes in the description box below. Keep it a G and follow my man on IG. And obviously, if you want to be dripped up like the Aki be on Split Decision, cop some of the Aki merch. I appreciate every single one of my Aki's. So shout out to the GOAT DBN for starting the new media wave and to be continue on the next episode of Aki Aki TV. Peace and we out.